I'm a bad guy then. You are a bad guy. You I lied to us. All right, look at this. Sometimes you gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet. You gotta, you gotta crack a couple eggs to yeah, make you an omelet. Yeah, you gotta crack oh, it. Oh, is that your new So you're throwing down life lessons now. I'm huh? throwing down eggs. Huh? Class is in session. The teacher's teaching class now. I'm, I'm cracking eggs uh of wisdom. What's up students, it's your boy, the Philly Golden Teacher, and welcome back to class. Today's topic will be liquid culture. I'll be show you guys a very easy recipe I like to use for creating some. And I'm going to go over some simple tips to make sure you're starting your liquid culture the proper way. Alright, let's get straight into it. The main advantage of using liquid culture is that you have live mycelium that's ready to colonize. This is going to cut out the process of germinating spores, which takes about a week or two. It saves you a good amount of time when you're cultivating. It's also useful by allowing us to multiply our culture out so that we can have an abundant supply of our culture. It's also going to carry the genetics of our culture out on a bigger scale as well. Most liquid culture recipes have a sugar content of around 4 or 5% or less by weight. More than this is toxic to mycelium. Other ingredients can also be added in small amounts to provide more nutrients. I would add in a little bit of light malt extract if I have a little bit laying around. Just be aware that some ingredients can cause cloudiness that can disguise contamination. Today I'll be showing you a very easy recipe that involves just using 5% of corn syrup. I like corn syrup because it's clear and it's going to allow you to have a much better view of what's happening inside of your jars. Honey and agave also works for substituted sugar nutrients. Alright, so here are the ingredients you're going to need to make your own liquid culture. We're going to need some liquid culture jar lids. If you don't have liquid culture lids, you can always order them pre-made online. Or if you want to make your own, you can check out my ultimate lid tech video. Liquid culture lids have a self-healing injection port and an air port for gas exchange. I'll have links to everything in the description below for you guys. You're also going to want some type of agitator. You can use magnetic stir bars, pieces of glass. Today I'm using two marbles. This is to help stir up the mycelium during the colonization phase. You're also going to need your glass mason jars, whatever container you want to use to hold your liquid culture in. I'm going to be using quart jars and pint jars for today's example. And next up, you're going to need some nutrients for your liquid culture solution. Today, we'll be using corn syrup as our primary nutrient. And we're going to be using some distilled water to create our solution with. You can also use tap water or drinking water here. I just find distilled water works a lot better because it's devoid of any minerals and the solution comes out much cleaner that way. You're also going to want some type of small measuring cup here to measure out your nutrients. If you don't have this, I'll provide the uh, weight measurements for uh, the nutrients here in case you don't have one of these. Alright, the first step here is to measure out our ingredients. The simple recipe is basically 5% corn syrup to the volume of distilled water. So in this case, my pint cup here, I'm going to measure out 300 milliliters of distilled water. And 5% of 300 milliliter is about 15 milliliters. So I'm using a gram scale here to weigh it out just so that I can give you guys a, a weight measurement approximately of what 15 milliliters of corn syrup is going to equal out to. Just in case you don't have one of these measuring cups, you can always just use a shot glass of some sort and just measure out the weight of the corn syrup. So for 15 milliliters of corn syrup, it's roughly about one tablespoon or about 20 grams by weight. Now we're going to go ahead and add this into our 300 milliliters of distilled water. And then after this, we're going to just add in our agitators. And then we'll go ahead and put on our liquid culture lids. We're going to give this a quick tighten. And we're going to go ahead and stir everything up to make sure that everything is evenly mixed. Now I'm going to just do the same thing here with a uh, quart jar. I'm just going to be doubling the recipe here. So we're going to do 600 milliliters for the quart jar. And I'm going to add in 30 milliliters of corn syrup or roughly 40 grams 
uh, and wait for corn syrup into this. And we'll just do the same thing, add in our agitators, put on our lid, tighten everything up, and give it a quick swirl to make sure everything's evenly incorporated. And uh, these will be ready to go in the pressure cooker and get sterilized. We're at the next part here. I'm going to show you guys how I prep the jars to get ready for the pressure cooker. Now I'm cutting up some aluminum foil here to cover the top of the lid. Uh, the aluminum foil is going to keep the filters dry when pressure cooking. Uh, I'm going to loosen up the lid here a little bit just so that it allows the steam from the pressure cooker to get inside the jar to sterilize everything. After we're done pressure cooking, we'll tighten up our lids. Uh, just for this process, what I like to do is loosen up the lids just to make it easier to get them sterilized. So we'll cover up with the foil and we'll go ahead and load them into the pressure cooker here. Now today I'm using a 23 quart Presto pressure cooker to sterilize my jars. I typically fill these up with about three quarts of water. I'll load in my jars and I'll go ahead and pressure cook them for about 25 minutes at 15 PSI. Please refer to your pressure cooker manual when operating one of these. I am not responsible for what you do with your pressure cooker. If you have one of these, I assume you know what you are doing. So please proceed with caution, common sense, and safety. All right, once my pressure cooker reaches 15 PSI, I'll go ahead and lower the heat down to medium just to maintain it. And I'll go ahead and set a timer for 25 minutes. All right, once 25 minutes is up, we'll go ahead and turn off the heat. And we'll go ahead and let this depressurize on its own. Once your jars have cooled down, you can transfer them into your workstation, whether that's a still air box or in front of a flow hood. There's a few methods to inoculate your jars with mycelium. Today I'm showing you what I do personally for my jars. It's a very straightforward method. First thing you want to do is go ahead and get your colonized agar dish. We'll go ahead and make the transfer from the mycelium on this dish over into our liquid culture jar. And I'm going to start by sanitizing everything with 70% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, you want to use this uh, alcohol in order to clean everything. Uh, it'll kill all the contamination and bacteria in your workspace area prior to doing any work in the area. So I'll go ahead and wipe down my jar lids, the injection ports, and uh, my little workspace, my gloves. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and get a disposable syringe. This is going to allow us to suck up the liquid culture solution inside of the jar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt this onto the colonized agar dish. And I'm going to separate the mycelium from the agar uh, so that it mixes into the solution. And then we'll go ahead and suck up that solution and inject that into our liquid culture uh, solution so that it'll uh, be able to colonize in there and uh, grow effectively. I'm going to go ahead and just wipe this down again just for safe measures. You can never be too sterile and clean uh, when you're working with uh, mycelium here. So uh, Today I'm using an 18 gauge needle to uh, extract this. Uh, 16 gauge is probably the best that you could use but I don't have that at the moment so we'll go ahead and just make do with 18 gauge. Um, so I've sucked up some liquid culture solution in here. And this is my colonized agar dish. Uh, it's pretty clean. I'll go ahead and open it up. And what I'm gonna do now is uh, inspect it to make sure that there isn't any contamination. And I'm gonna go ahead and squirt my liquid culture solution, the, the corn syrup solution on top of this. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna scrape the mycelium off of the surface of the dish. So now while that's going, uh, I'll go ahead and wipe this down with the isopropyl alcohol just to get it sanitized. I'm going to flame sterilize this just to make sure that it is extremely clean. And after we flame sterilize it, uh, it's pretty much uh, clean. I'll go ahead and uh, scrape little layers of mycelium off of the surface because uh, we want the mycelium in here. Uh, you can also just cut chunks of the mycelium in the agar and just drop it in. Uh, I find this method to be very, very easy to do. Um, it, it, you don't have to open up your 
jar lids for the liquid culture. That's what I like about doing this method. Um, you know, when you, anytime you open up your jar lids, you're exposing the jar to any potential uh, bacteria or contamination or little micro microorganisms from getting in there. So I don't like opening them up. So I like just injecting them in. So I'll go ahead and scrape the mycelium up so that it floats around in the liquid culture solution. And then I'll go ahead and suck up the solution back into the syringe. So now that you have a mixture of uh, liquid culture solution and mycelium inside of your syringe. I'll do a little bit of a zoom up here so you guys can get a closer look. So you can see mycelium inside of my syringe. Uh, I'm gonna do another wipe down here with the uh, isopropyl alcohol, just get it clean. Flame sterilize it again, just because you can never be too, too sterile. So this is gonna ensure that there's no bacteria inside of our syringe as we go ahead and inject this. I'm gonna wipe down my injection port again with the alcohol to sanitize it and go ahead and inject our mycelium into the liquid culture solution. So now that we have mycelium inside of the liquid culture solution, uh, it's gonna go ahead and colonize inside here and grow as it feeds off of the nutrients that's inside of the solution. After you have everything injected, you pretty much just want to go ahead and label your jars. I'm giving it a little quick swirl here just to kind of show you guys that there is mycelium inside of the jar here. And uh, over time, this mycelium is going to feed off of the nutrients that's inside of the liquid culture and it's going to grow and expand. After about three weeks of your mycelium being inside the corn syrup solution, uh, this is what it's going to look like. You're gonna start seeing little bits of mycelium expand and turn into little fluffy clouds inside of our jars. And uh, you're not gonna see a whole lot of anything else as we're using corn syrup and the solution is very clear. So you can identify uh, mycelium from anything else that should not be mycelium that's inside of the jar here. So liquid culture stores on average for about three to six months. You can store them at room temperature or in the fridge. I like to keep mine incubating around 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 degrees Celsius for about two to four weeks. And then I'll pop them into the fridge to slow down their colonization and to keep them there for uh, long-term storage. Eventually you will want to make transfers to keep the mycelium alive or else they run out of nutrients and they'll slowly die. Uh, pretty much uh, you work with liquid culture very same ways you work with agar whereas agar is working on a 2d platform liquid culture is the same process but in a 3d platform instead so the main benefit to creating liquid culture is that you can multiply out your genetics uh, when you're selecting out genetics uh, on your agars um, and you found a certain type of genetics that you really like and you want to uh, create more of it. You know, you could do more agar transfers, obviously. Uh, however, liquid culture is gonna speed up the process a lot better because now your mycelium has uh, more surface area in a 3D solution to colonize compared to the flat 2D surface area on agar. So there's an incorrect process and a correct process uh, the incorrect process is uh, going from spore syringe to liquid culture. I do not recommend this. Uh, spores are not always sterile and you could be injecting contaminated spores into your liquid culture. So if you do this, don't be alarmed if you end up with a bacterial soup. It's also much harder to see contamination in liquid compared to like a solid media such as agar. And the correct process is utilizing agar to make sure you have a clean culture. Ideally, you want to create a clone from a fresh fruit and then clean it up on your agar as needed and then introduce that mycelium to the liquid culture uh, solution. This ensures that you're reproducing genetics that you've selected as opposed to random genetics if you were to go straight from spores. Now, I've made the mistake of going from multi-spores to agar and to liquid culture and what ended up happening was this liquid culture solution was consistently producing terrible genetics for me. Uh, all my grows uh, had pins that aborted, um, had mutations. Um, so you definitely don't want to uh, multiply out uh, random genetics. You definitely want to select uh, ones out that you want from cloning 
and that way you know exactly what you'll be getting out of your liquid culture and you don't have to play guessing games with what kind of 10x that are going to show up once your liquid culture um, you know takes the fruiting now I've mentioned the agitators uh, being added to your liquid culture jars uh, to go into a little bit more details about this the purpose of the agitators are to break up the mycelium in order to help it expand throughout the liquid culture I would typically agitate or stir the liquid culture about every three or four days in order to help the mycelium break up and get more surface area exposed to the nutrients so that way it can expand quicker that pretty much wraps up our liquid culture basics here i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys get some information and knowledge out of this uh, and i hope you guys have some success with your liquid cultures i'd like to give a big thank you to all of my patreon subscribers i appreciate the support you guys have given me and it really pushes me to continue doing what i love on this channel so thank you guys and that's the end of our class here thank you guys for joining me today if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments or join us over on our discord community server we're always happy to answer any questions you guys might have and uh, feel free to leave a like and uh, subscribe if you want to see more contents like this thank you very much guys have a good one